Welcome, welcome to IHIP News. We're about to share a bunch of opinions. Yeah, lots of opinions. Okay, so Pumps, I want to ask you this. Donald Trump had to sell out big time to the religious right, to all those evangelical preachers, to all of the, you know, heritage foundations, the tongue talkers, the rattlesnake handlers. I mean, I'm talking the nuttiest of Nutville, right? And we know from when we interviewed Michael Cohen in 2016, they all prayed around him in Trump Tower and they went up on the elevator and Michael Cohen said he looked at him and said, can you believe they believe all that shit? (laughs) I remember. So my question is this. He's entering his second term in January and he will owe he won't owe anyone anything. He doesn't have to uh, pander to them anymore for their votes because either he can't run for a third term or if they go full fascist and try to make it where he can work run for a third term. Let's face it. He's 78. He, right. You know, free bases, McDonald's, snorts, Diet Coke, Adderall, all the other stuff. He's probably not going to make it. So how how much of the favor does he return to the religious right in this or I should say religious Reich in this uh, second term? Here's my thought on that. He is the most transactional person on the planet. And we know he doesn't hold anything in regard except money and personal flattery. So if I had to put money down, my guess would be that he doesn't give a shit about their agenda anymore because he doesn't need them anymore. He needed them to get elected. He needed them to fire up the base. But I don't think he has any loyalty Period. He demands loyalty, expects loyalty, and gives none. My guess, if there is something that would hurt his bank account, because we know that he is going to continue to make money during the presidency, off the presidency, he is going to go tell these people to kiss off. Now, because these churches have so much money, could that be something that entices him to continue with their agenda. But in terms of, do I think he is going to be loyal to the Christian right? I absolutely do not. Do you? I mean, no, I don't think so. Um, And so it brings us to the question of what does his second term look like? Does he govern from a sense of just getting personal adulation and keeping his approval rating up and bouncing around like a ball in a pinball machine, like, oh, shit, you know, that tanked my approval rating. So I'm going to run over here because this is a person that doesn't really have core beliefs. And when he was president the first time, he wanted everybody to love him, everyone to like him, and he wanted everybody to vote for him again. Well, voting for him again will be off the table. So then that just focuses on she rules his people like an iron fist. Mm-hmm. They come to attention when he comes out. And he talked about that a lot, making everyone like him, which is so insecure and so weak <laughs> that he wants to force everyone to like him. So what does he what what are his governing principles? I mean, we know what he said to get elected, but then once he's in power, I mean, let's face it, his number one hobby that he loves to do more than anything is read stuff about himself. Right. And be on Twitter or True Social. Like, that's his favorite thing to do. I'm wondering, let's, okay, so we have the Fox News echo chamber where a lot of the Christian right watch the news. So what happens when Fox starts saying, well, he's not delivering promises to the people that he promised, the evangelicals? What's going to happen then is does that change how he views it? Because he loves to watch them talk great about him on Fox well, News. Well, his his whole MO, or it's it's two points. Number one, he's so great. And number two, who he's mad at. Right. He has to have an enemy. He has to be able to belittle somebody. He has to be able to demean somebody. And right before the election, he was all over Fox News because they were running Kamala ads. He was madder and hornet about it, you know, losing his shit on True Social. And so as... We progress. I mean, he's obviously going to have a lot of wanting to browbeat particular Democrats in the um, House and Senate that stand up to him. He is going to want to browbeat any Supreme Court justices in their dissents or whatever, you know, comes in front of them. Um, Governors. And so he that keeps him pretty occupied because Gavin Newsom, Shapiro, Kathy Hochul, uh, you know, just an array of blue state governors are going to be pretty 
iron fisted towards him. And then you have like the AOC, Senator Warren, Bernie Sanders, Adam Schiff, who he loves to pick on. He hates Adam Schiff. Cannot stand him. Nancy Pelosi hates her. So I don't know. You know, he loves this combination of I'm so great. Plus, I have to really tear anybody down that speaks facts about me. And so, I mean, he's good. We know what it's going to look like in that regard. The only thing that's different is he does it. He's not going to feel like he has to repay anybody favors. I mean, this is a guy who famously doesn't pay his bills. Right. At venues, he doesn't repay his Mr. Back the Blue, and he doesn't reimburse these police departments and sheriff departments that provide security and, you know, uh, traffic control when he comes into town for his rallies and all this stuff. So if he doesn't pay those bills, I'm just wondering who all left, who all leaves the second term jolted and hurt the most? <laughs> you know, who Whose feelings does he hurt the most. And I kind of think it might be the religious right because he's not an evangelical. No. And that brings us to the Heritage Foundation. They have this entire Project 2025. His name's in it over 300 times. He's their guy. He's their savior. What if he tells them to kiss his ass too? He kind of did. He did. Found, he? Well, he found out during the election right. that it was very, um, it didn't poll well and Unpopular. public opinion didn't like it. And so he realized what was in it. And even he said, I don't, I never heard of that. I don't have anything to do with that. And I think maybe the media might have given him too much credit that he was this Christian nationalist that wanted to roll this out. He is a nationalist. But he's not a Christian right. nationalist. I, I mean, this is a guy who was has lived in New York City his entire life. So we live in the Bible Belt. So we are familiar, even though it sounds crazy, all of this Heritage Foundation stuff. A lot of people around us believe all that shit. Right. Wives sub, should submit, et cetera, et cetera. Trump doesn't buy into any of that. We've had his um, niece, Mary Trump, on. He said, no. He said, the least religious person I know. So I think that a lot of these um, evangelical preachers that do a lot of the praying around him, I think that they might get jolted. But he does like how much they love him. <laughs> Just, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like he loves that, like they Photoshop me and they say that I'm the second coming. Right. Like He wants the... Jesus style worship. And a lot of them like put it as a, though it's an equivalency, right? Jesus and Trump. And so he likes that. So that's just going to be an interesting thing to watch because they're going to get thrown under the bus to an extent because he's not a believer. Right. And so how far under the bus do they just get ghosted? Or, you know, I don't know. I haven't. I'm now after filming this, you know, 10 Clowns in a clown car from the Heritage Foundation could roll up with Project 2025 at Mar-a-Lago, Mar and this whole point is moot. Right. But I just don't know that that's his thing, that the Christian base for him was transactional to get their votes. Right. And I think you make a great point about the Heritage Foundation because it is super right wing and super unpopular. So if he rolls it out and it makes people dislike him so much... Does his need to be liked overtake that? You know what we should do? We should start like a running chart of who is he going to exile first? Like, just is it going to be Fox News? Is it going to be the Heritage Foundation? Is it going to be the Christians? Is it going to be J.D. Vance? Like Susie Wiles. I mean, she's got to be up at the top. Yeah. Who does he start cutting the f at first, and how far does the shit roll downhill? Okay, here's what we'll do, listener. We'll make a breakup list because Ew. we know we know from his first term that people don't last. Right, they are completely you know cycled in and out rather quickly um, because he's so bombastic and you know not agreeable and a narcissist and all of the things that everybody's known for the last ten years and people in New York have known for a lot lot longer. But it's going to be interesting to see. But a lot of, here's the only here's the scariest part is there are smarter people surrounding him that know how easy he is to manipulate. Right. And then there are larger nefarious players that know how easy he is to manipulate. Like the whole I don't think Trump is pro-life. No, I don't either. I think the pro-life movement sat down with him and said, 
nobody has been able to do this for 50 years. You're going to be the only one. Even Reagan couldn't do this. That's how good of a president that you are. That's why he knows how unpopular an abortion ban is nationally, but he cannot help himself. <laughs> By bragging about being the only person that right. got it overturned, he cannot. I'm sure his he advisors can't. were say, were saying, "Do not take a victory lap." I'm sure they were saying that, but he couldn't help but take a victory lap. He couldn't help himself. So there's that dangerous component of it too, of the people, the Bannons, you know, Stephen Miller, who's been around him for a long time, so he clearly knows how to manipulate it. Right, and well, you know, and always the X factor is Putin and Elon Musk. That's a different breakup. I list. think it's going to be interesting to see how long Elon Musk lasts in his inner circle. Yeah, that's an interesting, especially if Trump gets jealous of his wealth. Well, I think he probably already is jealous of his wealth, and he, but he needed his wealth because Trump had been reduced to selling sneakers, Bibles, coins, $2 bills, fake digital cards. He, that's what he had been reduced to, begging for money all the time. Um, so there's no question that that's going to be a big issue. I think Elon wants the power to be president. Trump wants the power to be the richest man in the world. And so those two desires juxtaposed to one another and those two egos and right. both pretty mentally unstable, Trump getting the slight edge there, that's going to be an interesting uh relationship to watch unfold, in my opinion, because I don't think he's going to be there all four years holding hands, playing patty cake at the Resolute right. desk. It's I, just not going to happen. No, I don't think so either. But I like the idea of a breakup list. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later. It's so 